to register tonight if you're not coming. I didn't say that right. If you're coming, you don't have to register tonight. You can show up tomorrow and just show up. But it would really help our, our cooks to know how much food to prepare if you're thinking of coming tomorrow to be able to register tonight. So it's one of these forms that you're looking for. And they're right at, there's some registration people right by the bookstore entrance if you're at all interested in joining us tomorrow uh, for a healing workshop. Pastor Sam Larby and his wife Sophia are going to be leading that. And it's 10 o'clock in the um, overflow rooms at the back. So if you're at all interested in that, just head back to the connection desk. They're going to be there for another 15 minutes or so. And uh, you can do that registration. So I just want to encourage you. The other thing is um, in the afternoon, after you've had your meal, we're going to be putting you in teams, three, four of you in a team. Uh, hopefully there's enough cars. You know, one of you, whoever has a car, will put three people in your car kind of thing. And we'll send you out. And we have about, uh, I think, 25 houses uh, that we're going to go to of people who've said, could a team come and pray for the sick in our house? And so that should be really exciting. We're looking forward to some really good testimonies on Sunday morning of what God's been doing. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. So if you'd like to join us and like to register, you can head to the back. If you just want to show up tomorrow morning, you're welcome to do that as well. The doors will be open tomorrow at 9.30. So don't come earlier than that because it'll be cold. But <laughs> 9.30 is when the doors are open and the workshop starts at 10 at the back. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. And what else was I going to say? Uh, that's probably what we'll say for now. We're going to start in... Are you about ready now, Yawin? Oh, we'll start right now then. Sometimes we start a couple minutes late. Tonight we'll start a couple minutes early. Why don't you stand up? Glad to have you here tonight. My name's Steve, if you haven't met me before, one of the pastors here. And this is a, a great night. We're going to have uh, a time to welcome the Holy Spirit, especially for healing and, um, and ministry into your physical body. And we had a little bit of an ice storm last night so there wasn't a whole bunch of people here but there was a whole bunch of anointing here and lots and lots of people got got healed last night it was really really good so we're expecting that to happen again tonight so father we welcome you we welcome you in this place can you just give a personal invitation to the father to come just say daddy would you come for me tonight would you come for my friends would you come for the people that are sitting close to me tonight you may not know who they are just say, Father, we welcome you for tonight. Welcome your will to be done. Your will to be done tonight. And by the way, the Father's will is to do good. The Father's will is to bring healing to your life. The Father's will is for you to be healed tonight, not to be postponed. Jesus said, today is the day when he was ministering to a little man who was born blind. His disciples were thinking, well, like, what, what's going on here? And Jesus said, who cares about the issues? Today is the day. And while I'm here, it's light. While I'm here, we work and do the kingdom of God stuff. So, Father, come. Fill us all. We worship you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift up your hand together to the Lord. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Because God is good. It is good all the time.
Praising you, heavens and all that's above. Praising you, angels and men and people. Let them all learn. Praising. Let's sing to Him. Praising the sun, moon, and bright shining star. Praising you, heavens and waters and sky. The sun, moon, the bright shining star, raising you heavens and waters and sky.
somebody beside of you and say, I feel the anointing in this place. I feel a freedom in this place. I feel like God is so awesome in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. hungry for you Lord tonight we need more of you father just come Lord Jesus come Holy Spirit
higher and higher and higher to
rejoice tonight Lord we thank you because of your presence so sweet in this place tonight thank you Jesus you are great and you do miracles so great Lord we praise you Father you 
everything good. You are so awesome in this place. We're going to sing a song that declares that Jesus is awesome in this place tonight. I'm going to sing the old song. And I believe everybody knows this song. Just declare his name. you've been worshiping him I'd like you just to close your eyes and let him now come and minister to you Holy Spirit come for your people let him begin to re refresh you your body your spirit your soul every part of who you are just begin to receive from him if you're not sure what you do you just close your eyes and do nothing let him come Some of you may feel I'm giving you a hug. Some of you may feel strength, power, energy going into your physical body. Spirit of God, come. Breathe life into us in the very same way that you breathe life into Adam. Father, how much more can we receive life when we're already alive? That breath, what, what greater things can you do in us? Just feel his cleansing over you now. I had a young man today come and share with me something in his life that he'd done this last week and wasn't too proud of. 
probably every single one of us has done something this week, today, that we're really not too proud of. Just let the Lord cleanse you of that. Maybe it was a thought or thoughts, actions, words, attitudes. Father, we put the stuff of our week behind us. We are entered into a place with you now. Just like in the centuries past, the Jewish people, when they came to the temple, they would have to wash their hands, they wash their feet. They had to be cleansed before they came close to you. Father, we thank you that we're not obligated to do that. You're the one who now comes and cleanses us. And when we confess our sins, you cleanse us and forgive us. We don't have to be perfect anymore to come to you. We get to come to you just as we are. And we welcome your wonderful Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. worship the Lord again. Welcome your Holy Spirit into this present, into our presence. Spirit of God, come and be with us tonight. And Father, we know that wherever the Holy Spirit is, good things take place. Great things take place. Miracles take place. And so we welcome you here. We welcome you here. Do what you'd like tonight. Do what you'd like. One of the ladies from our, um, who does some interpretation for our deaf people had a vision. Come on up here. And she saw this amazing little picture as we were worshiping tonight. She's very shy. Okay, you guys say it, Steve? When people were worshiping here tonight, she saw in this church, she saw a roof like a roof. The roof had all opened up. And the people were worshiping. And like, and like the way that, like the heart of the people, the way they were worshiping was like you were just reaching up to heaven, like, like you know, like um, candle, like just reaching up and lifting up, heading up toward heaven. Well, Father, thank you that you receive our worship. We thank you, Father. Isn't it good to worship the Lord? It is good to be distracted from your stuff and focus on the Lord's stuff, isn't it? Thank you so much, Yawan and Ben. That was excellent. Amen. Let's give them band a clap. Woo! Thank you, guys. Well, welcome, everybody. For those of you who weren't here at the very, very beginning. My name's Steve and one of the pastors here. 
And uh, tonight is a little different than our normal Friday night Come Holy Spirit meeting. It's still a Come Holy Spirit meeting, but we have a guest speaker tonight. And his name is Sam Larby. He pastors uh, seven churches in London, England that are primarily African churches. And he is originally from Ghana in West Africa. And he was with our... Um, he arrived on Monday and on... Tuesday night was at Followers Mission downtown where Lawrence, who was playing the keyboard, helps uh, serve. And on Wednesday night, he was here with all the, the prayer ministry team, our cell leaders, all those that are active in ministry from TACF. We had a great meeting upstairs, filled the upstairs rooms. And then last night when we had the ice storm, uh, we were here, we had a great meeting, and tonight's going to be a great meeting. And tomorrow, we have a seminar opportunity for your workshop to really learn how to be doing this stuff, and Sam's going to have lots of practice time and just learning how to minister to people, and it is so easy to pray for the sick. In fact, can I tell you a a silly story of how easy it is? Um, Gilberto is my witness to this, and his wife Maria, who's sitting in the second row. We were at a meeting at a a United Church of Canada. How many know United Churches of Canada? And they don't all have, not everybody in the United Church of Canada is an active, you know, follower of Jesus. And so that was the, the church we went to. And we had everyone who was sick to stand up, maybe 90 people in the, in the meeting that were sick standing up. And I'm just about to get them to pray for each other, and I felt the Holy Spirit say, no, 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 that's too hard. Do it easy. <laughs> I was like, okay. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, just get everyone to count, do we say three or ten? Six? Okay, I can't remember. We counted to something. And it was like, let's just count to six. And after six, you'll be healed. And my wife's at the back going, no, no. (laughs) And, you know, when you get an impression from the Lord or a thought from the Lord, you just have to do it, don't you? That's part of living by faith. And if nothing happens, guess who looks silly? Me. I've been silly many times, so I'm used to that. So anyways, we had everyone go. And we didn't even close our eyes. It was just like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I said, check yourself. And like 80 out of the 90 people had been healed, just counting to six. And it was like, okay. Well, if that's how easy it is. And it was trying to convince people the reason why it's so easy is because that's what God wants. And then sadly, it's usually we talk ourselves out of it. And if I can pick on some of our prayer ministry team and cell leaders on the Wednesday night meeting, it was amazing how many of the people who are in leadership in our church, when they were healed and came up to give a testimony, said something like, I didn't expect this. And that's the way it is with most of us, isn't it? We're always thinking for someone else, but never having faith for ourselves. And we sort of talk ourselves and believe ourselves out of what God has for us. So we said this last night. I'd like you to say this prayer with me. Jesus, Jesus. I'm here here. to be healed. healed. Not just my friend. friend. Me. Me. Tonight, any second now, (laughs) because I don't know when Sam's going to do the praying, but anyways, good. Well, thank you, friends, for saying that prayer, because you've just given yourself permission to to be healed. Uh, Just a couple quick announcements then. Tomorrow, if you'd like to come to the workshop, there's a $10 registration fee, and that basically covers your lunch, and so that's 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. We're going to be in the overflow rooms at the back. So when you come in, head to the back. We're going to start right at 10. So make sure you're here early and or right on time. We're going to finish around 12 o'clock and then head into our cafe and have a lunch meal together. And then after lunch, we're going to send people out. There's about 25 different homes that we're going to be visiting where people have phoned into our church office this week and said, I have my mom who's not feeling well or a brother or a sister or a friend. Uh, There's some people going to be going to hospital visits, some people going to be going to seniors' residences, and we're just going to be ministering to the people and practicing, and we're not allowed to come home until they're healed. So that's that's the deal. And then on Sunday, I'm sure we'll have some great stories on Sunday uh, as to what God's going to do. So that's the idea for tomorrow. So you're coming in the morning and then uh, having lunch and then heading out in the afternoon to, to minister to some people. And it looks like we're going to send like one car to each house And so you'll probably be able to be at that house for half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, whatever length it takes uh, you to get them healed. If you heal them in five minutes, then go to the neighbors. Um, That'd be good. Sunday, if you are here, let me just say Sunday we have five different options for you 
uh, where TACF has meetings. We have a meeting in this building at 1030, and Pastor Sam Larby is going to be ministering at that meeting. It's going to be an African day, so if you are an African, wear your native outfit. Um, all my native outfits are too small because I left Africa when I was five, so i sorry, I can't wear mine. Uh, but that's the idea, and we're going to be having an African meal after the morning meeting. And if you don't know how to make African food, bring either rice, a salad, or dessert. One of those, and you can join in. And the Africans are going to make the, uh, the African food for us. So that'll be here. 10 o'clock in Ajax, we have TACF East meets there at the Ajax Community Center. And uh, Yawan, who's leading worship uh, tonight, is usually the worship leader at TACF East. At 10.30 in the morning in Newmarket at the Glenway Golf and Country Club, we have a meeting there. And uh, Bruno and Naomi, who are sitting in the front, are the pastors of that congregation. Who's your worship leader this Sunday? Do you remember? John Patel. John Patel. Okay. John Patel, one of our uh, young adult worship leaders, is going to be there. And um, Sunday night at 6 o'clock, you have two different options. You can go downtown Toronto for a young adult church at the YMCA, Young and Grosvenor. Uh, 20 Grosvenor, and that's called TACF Central. And then Sunday night here at 6 o'clock, Pastor Sam is going to be back, and we have TACF Spanish that meets here. But it's not just Spanish. The worship is Spanish, and then everything else after that is translated from Spanish to English or English to Spanish, depending on who's doing the talking at, at that particular time. So you've got five different places to go on Sunday. We're one congregation, but we just have five different places where you're to meet. So that's, uh, that's what's coming up on Sunday. Good. We need to have a couple of people give testimony from last night who had uh, full healing or a measure of healing. So where are some of those people that were healed last night? Jump to your feet. Jump. I don't see jumping. There's a jumper over there. Come on up. And who else was healed? Come, come. Where's the people? Come. Now, where's the husband and wife? You guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Good. We'll start with this lady. What happened to you last night? Um, I, First of all, what was wrong? Oh, what was wrong? It was my daughter, and I called her on the cell phone. She lives in Fort Myers, Florida, and um, she was she's had hip hip pain. Well, she said forever. So as long as she can remember, she's been in car accidents and things. And so they had a team that got together and they prayed over the phone, and she's completely healed. It's gone. All the pain. over the telephone. Yes. Woohoo! Yeah. Excellent. So those of you on the internet tonight, if you're on the internet watching us right now, give me a wave. I don't know. I'm just being goofy here. Uh, you can enter in on everything that we're doing tonight. Like if people get uh, healed over the telephone, like why not over the internet? Okay, this couple here, um, we prayed for you first, and your ache and some pain were a little stubborn. They, they were a little bit later coming, but what happened with you? What was your problem? What happened? Um, when I was a young kid, I broke my tailbone, and I've had arthritis ever since probably high school in my back and my hip, and the pain is gone. Okay. I went swimming today with my kids, and we just had a blast, and no pain. I slept last night. <laughs> That's very good. Excellent. And what happened with you, sir? What was your problem? I also had a back problem. I have herniated discs and arthritis in my back, and it, the pain is much, much better. So there's still a little bit of pain there? A little bit, okay. way down low, but the middle part where it really hurt is, is feels much better. Okay. And some, one of the things that Pastor Sam was saying last night is that for some people, healing is, is progressive. And you remember that Jesus even had that, didn't he? That occasionally he would minister to people and say, now go and wash your face. And it wasn't until they washed their face that they got healed. And then there was the lepers. There was the one man who... Um, came and got healed instantly, and then his, um, as he was going to the priest, sorry, as he was going to the priest, he got healed, and then 10 of his buddies came back a little bit later, and as they were going, they got healed as well. And so sometimes people are healed five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, two hours, the next day kind of thing. And so yours, we prayed for you, and probably about 45 minutes later is when it actually showed up, wasn't it? This lady prayed for you? Who? Marco. Okay, Marco, come on up, finish him off. He's got still a little bit of pain. Come on, finish him off. Okay, and your arm was bad, wasn't it? Yeah, it was my, my arm. It started with my hip, though, and then from there it was spreading to my arm, the arthritis, because I had osteoporosis, they said I have on my hip. Okay. So then that spread to my arm in the past couple of two weeks. It was really bad. I couldn't even bend or lift it. Yep. And you were able to lift up your son yesterday. Can you lift up your daughter still? Can you lift her up? Yay! Woohoo! 
Very good. So no pain when you do that? No. She, I know she was punching you. I saw that. She was punching. When she punched the pastor, that was good. All right. I don't encourage that. <laughs> How many of you remember Charles and Francis Hunter? A couple in their 80s. At least in their 80s. Maybe 90s. And when he was here, I have, that was one of the most dramatic. I'll get to you in a minute. One of the most dramatic healing meetings that we ever had, probably like, eight, ten years ago, this place was packed, like just full, full, full. And he was doing a healing teaching. And he said, everyone with bad back, stand up. And like 500 people stood up. And he just prayed a prayer. And he said, now bend and do this. And like 495 of them just healed like that. And it was like, no. We got 490 liars is what I was thinking. <laughs> but people were fine. At the end of the meeting, he was, um, when people said that they had stomach problems, guess what he was doing? He was punching people. Now, the good thing is a 90-year-old doesn't really hit you hard. Uh, but it was like, poof. And uh, it was sort of slow motion punch. Mm. But people, were, people get healed, you know, when you punch people. Some people get hurt, too. All right. What, what happened with you last night? Well, last night I went for it, <clears throat> excuse me, because of my foot. There's just been a lot of pain when I walk, and sometimes when I'm out, I'm in a limp. And God has told me to get back out on the streets. My sister was almost murdered in 204. So I'm just walking. This Sunday will be a year since her death. And God said, get back out on the streets for the hookers, the drug addicts, the, the homeless. And I was out last Sunday, and I said to Michael and Friday, I'm not leaving tonight, because if I've got to get back on the streets, this foot's got to work. It's got to come with me. And what happened? The Lord didn't give me complete healing. Okay. And then Friday, I believe, prophesied over me last night. And he said, Joanne, I love your faith. He said, you know what? You get outside, or you go home. Call your family and friends and wait and see what God's going to do through you. And did anything happen today? So I called Jennifer, who's here tonight. She, I woke her out of bed. She has low vision. And I prayed the prayer, because I'd never done this before, healing the sick. But I did. I said, okay, Lord, you want me to do that? I'll do it. So I woke her out of bed, and she told me after she prayed that her sight improved. She's here tonight because Jesus is going to give her full sight. We're not leaving until he does. Okay, very <laughs> good. Where's your, which one's your friend? Right here. Okay, friend, you, friend, you want to come on up here? Come on up here, friend. What was her name? Joanne? Jennifer. Okay. So Jennifer has poor eyesight. Is that correct? Come on up, Jennifer. I have poor eyesight as well, Jennifer. I wear glasses. Um, how long have you had your eye problems? I've had it since I was seven months old. Okay. And what happened at that time? Um, that I was diagnosed with a very rare eye condition. Okay. And so what, what uh, portion of sight do you have right now? I have at the back of the eye is all scarred. Okay. And at the front of the eye, it's very, very hard to see, like small print. So you can see a tiny little bit, like 5%, is that what they say? 10%. 10% is on the borderline. Okay. And uh, I do, um, when Joanne called me, I, my eyes were really bothering me. And then after a while, they just stopped, I stopped hurting, you know, and starting on the mend. Okay. How many of you have bad eyes? Stand up. I think we should pray this prayer together for everyone. Would that be all right? Who's got bad eyes? If you have contacts, glasses, that's you. I don't want them <laughs> Okay. If you were here last night, you know the prayer. If you don't know the prayer, you can, you're going to learn it real quick. My healing belongs to me. My healing belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done. Because of what Jesus has done. I receive my healing. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, what you do when you're ministering to someone is inside your head, you count the three. One, two, three. And you say, now check yourself. So look around. Take your glasses off. Anyone better? Anyone worse? Because worse is a good deal. 
Who's, who's feeling better already? Take a look at, pick up some paper or something. This brother over here, good. We're going we're gonna to say this prayer like 20 times tonight, friends. So it's going to be, it's going to get, get going to get, I can't, now I need my tongue healed. It's going to get better. Just keep, you stay right here. Um, Ronnie, do you want to get her? I mean, not get her, but keep, keep ministering. Just put your hand and keep ministering to her. Just, brother, you put your hand up about your eyes being better. What's going on here? Well, I've been praying this prayer for a long time, trying to I get rid of these things. And because I know God wants good things for me, and that's my eyesight too. And so when we just said that prayer, there's a little bit more clarity without these things. You know? And so I want more. I want it all to where I don't have to wear these things longer. Okay. Okay. Let's say the prayer again. My healing belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done, I receive my healing now in Jesus' name. Ooh, now let him come. Let the Holy Spirit just come on you. Let him minister to you. Do you know that everybody that got healed in the ministry of Jesus, it wasn't because Jesus was healing them? Like, sure, he was the person that was talking and putting his hand on them, but he clearly said over and over again, I don't do anything of myself. So who did the ministry? The Father's will, and it was the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord that Jesus said is on me so that I can heal the brokenhearted, set the captives free. And you know what? Jesus added, when he quoted that passage from Isaiah, he misquoted it. I think he purposely misquoted it because he added the only disease that had never been healed, and I don't know if it's in the history of the world, but certainly no one had been healed of blindness in the Old Testament. And when Jesus quotes that verse at the very beginning of his ministry, his first sermon, after he's been baptized and the Holy Spirit's come on him, he says, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, and he includes restoring sight to the blind, which had never, ever been done. It was the big deal. People had been raised from the dead before. That was not the big deal. Blindness was the big deal. And Jesus added that phrase. Why does he add that phrase? Because <laughs> that's one of the things that the Holy Spirit loves to do. The Holy Spirit loves to come and minister. And so, Father, every person who's standing, everyone who has bad eyesight, those of you that are on the Internet as well, those of you who are watching DVD, Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to come and fix our eyes and fix every other part of our body in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, some of you are going to be much better. How many have even better already, your eyesight? Sally? Great. Anyone else? Over here, Wendy? Great. There's a whole bunch. Well, not a whole bunch, but there's a number of you. That's very, very good. All righty. You may be seated. Oh, I love healing. I just really like, uh, you know what I feel? Every time someone gets healed, it's like Satan, we just get to kick him in the teeth and uh, get him a little bit of payback for, for what he's done. Uh, some of us visited a church in Nigeria a few years ago, and they were having some deliverance ministry. And when they were casting the demons out, the, the people would be, it would appear, be experiencing excruciating pain. Like they called fire on the people, and they'd be burning. They'd be tearing their clothes off. They couldn't stand on the ground because it would be like hot coals, like fire. And they're just, they're in agony. And we're going like, is that really a good thing to do? Like, these people are in pain. And they let them run around for 30 seconds or a minute in agony. And we talked to the pastor afterward and said, you know, like, what, why would you do that? And he said, they're not having any problem. That's the demons that are getting tortured. We just, we just like to, to kick the demons in the teeth and make them pay before they go to hell. And it was like... Oh, okay. Because as soon as they said go, and the demons actually, you know, f finally left, the person was absolutely fine. They had no problems. They were sort of trying to figure out why they didn't have clothes on. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know why I tell stories like that, but I like telling stories like that. <clears throat> Alrighty, I think we've done the announcements. Uh, let me just say a couple things about Sam has two books that he brought and a CD. And this is some African worship music called He Kept You from their church in London. And so if you like African worship, this is a CD you can get in our resource center. And there's two books. This one 
is an amazing book. Chapter one is the best chapter of any book in, that you're going to find in the Resource Center. Um, my wife and I are mentioned in chapter one. <laughs> Anyways, it's called Healing is Easy Because of What Jesus Has Done. And it is an amazingly easy book to read. And you're going to be inspired to minister to people and, and have faith and confidence that, that God can use you as well. So that's what that book's all about. And Sam's church is known for praying. If you go to their website, they're a church that prays, they're a church that fasts, and this is a book that he's written called The Awesome Power of Prayer, and is a very, very good book, and I want to encourage you to grab that one, especially if you want to see some prayers answered in your life. Great. Well, we're going to receive an offering tonight, and if you're here and you'd like to bless the Lord and further his kingdom, if you'd like to invest into your own future, that's what offerings are an opportunity to do is to sow into your destiny and say, God, I'm putting my money where my mouth is, and I am expecting you to do good things in and around me. I'm expecting you to do ministry in my city, on my street, uh, all those kind of things. And so offerings are a great time for us to, to just honor the Lord and to, to give thanks to him. I'd like you to stand up, please. Would you do that? And whether you're giving a gift or not, Father, we bless every person those that are able to give a gift tonight, those that, that, that aren't. Father, we bless each person. We're asking, Father, that you would multiply our effectiveness in our communities, in our streets, with our families. And, Father, as, as, we, as we give into the kingdom of God, Father, I thank you that we are sowing seeds into the, into the kingdom of God, that these seeds are going to grow up and there's going to be a multiplication at some point. And so, Father, we just speak that and say, plant us as well, as we give our, our finances, as we give ourselves as well. And, Father, we're saying, would you do that for us in the name of Jesus? Amen. You can be seated and you can pass the bucket. If you'd like to have a receipt for your gift, you are very welcome to take one of the envelopes that's in front of you, print your name as neat as possible, and uh, uh, fill in your address. That would be very, very good. If you are a regular attender of TACF, instead of having to do that every week, we have some numbered envelopes that you can get at the connection desk right by the, the resource center. And what you do is you just fill in the envelope once, and then after that we, we are able to identify you with that number, and it just saves you a lot of time. So if you'd like to have a personalized set of, of envelopes, you can just grab them. They're free at the back. Um, help yourself to, to one of those. Great. Can I just give you a quick little teaching on, on giving? And I know some of you have heard me say this before, but I really think that money is the first test that the Lord gives his people as to whether he's going to release more of the anointing in your life. Jesus said this little phrase. He said, if, if he can't trust you with money, how can he trust you with worldly, sorry, if he can't trust you with worldly riches, how can he trust you with true riches? And I think he was talking about having a greater anointing in your life, having a greater um, ability to, to have hope and confidence and to believe for the big things. And it was like Jesus is saying, you know what, far too many people trust in their own money for their future and for their destiny. And the Lord's saying, when you learn to trust me in, in how you use your, your finances and how you, how you treat the money that comes into your hand uh, as a steward rather than as a hoarder, um, that sort of, I think, is the, is the thing that propels people into a higher place. You will not find too many anointed men and women of God who are not extravagant with their finances. They're very, very generous when it comes to finances. Um, I could tell you stories of a few people that I know that if I said their name, you would absolutely know that this is an anointed person of God, and yet they're just massively um, investing into the kingdom of God with their own personal finances, with their own income. And so I think that if that's a lesson that they've learned, and if that's what Jesus said, that true riches comes from being able to, from being responsible and being um, a good steward with worldly riches, I just want to encourage you, I think that is a, an important key. And so, like, for my wife and I, we try every year to give more than we've ever given before. And last year was a, a world record for Stephen Sandra Long. Woohoo! <laughs> 
hopefully this year will be a world record for Steve and Sandra Long in terms of how much we're able to give away. And it's our privilege just to do that. Sandra, we are filling up with gas tonight, uh, gasoline in our, in our car, our minivan, and so it takes a lot of gasoline. And you're sitting there in the cold for 15 minutes, not 15 minutes, it just seemed like that, you know, holding that metal nozzle, and it's like... <sighs> and there's a big lottery picture. $12 million for whatever this lottery is. And so I get in the car, and that's what Sandra's been thinking of while I've been shivering out, put, filling the car up with gas. And she goes, wouldn't it be great to win the lottery? And you know what Sandra said? Basically, she had planned out how we were going to divide $12 million. She goes, $6 million goes to TACF. We can fix up everything here. And then we can give a million to each of your brothers, my, my brothers and sisters, and to my, my brother. And it's like, I'm thinking, okay, that's 12 million gone. What about us? <laughs> well, that's just the way Sandra was thinking. She wasn't thinking of ourselves. It's like, if we get that, we're giving it out. So I want to encourage you to have that kind of heart. All right, Mr. Yawan. Where's Mr. Yawan? Is the band coming back again? No band. Lawrence? Your band's not coming back again. Okay. Band's gone for lunch? No. All right, Mr. Sam, that means you are on. Let's welcome Sam Larvey. What are you doing up here? Do you, know, do you know what you're going to be doing up here? You do? You know what you're going to do. Is it going to be good? Because <laughs> yeah. is it going to be tricky? Like, should I be running or should I stay? <laughs> now he's going to tell you what happened to him tonight. Because I saw him and his sister, they were looking at me. They were saying something some things I wasn't hearing and I was winking at him and then the sister plugged the carriage and they came over to see me and what was it about? Tell them. <sighs> oh, sea of eyes here. Go on. About my waltz. Um, and not going down. But then he healed it, and then he went down, and didn't hurt him more. What happened was, when he came over, he showed me that. And I asked, is it hurting? He said, yes. Both of them said, yes. I said, would you say this prayer after me? This belongs to me. We say it together, please. This belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done. I receive, I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I said, check whether it's still hurting. Is that not anymore? So I called him up and I said, You're going to say the testimony. And he says, It's now gone down. So the swelling is coming down. He's just received his healing. And kids, when they say it, they are telling the truth. Thank you very much. We're going to clap for you, okay? Would you please? Daddy, you want to receive him? Or you want to go through that way? Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I say praise the Lord, the response will be hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow, this is brilliant. And once again, I'll say to Steve and Sandra, thank you so much for inviting us over. It's been wonderful since last Monday evening, Tuesday morning, all through to today. We've seen the hand of God working so powerfully. And what I've come here to tell you tonight is the job is already done. And it's about receiving. Maybe your prayer is, Lord, I need this healing. It's been there for too long a time. Some time ago in North Carolina, I went to a meeting, and unbeknownst to me, there was a lady who had prayed. Once in every month, they have healing service. And she told herself, Lord, tonight is got to be my night. I'm not going to leave this place without without my miracle. So
so during the worship I felt a cold chill over my thigh the first time about 50 minutes later I felt that again and I was going to be the speaker so I got on, on the platform and I said someone here has been healed of a chronic pain in the thigh where are you and this mama Paula jumped up and she started screaming I am healed I am healed I am. and healing broke out in that service and I bumped into her the following Monday she tells me this was a prayer I said to God and tonight if that is your prayer and even people friends relatives who are not here by proxy by the time you get home it is well all over the place glory hallelujah and i'm going to sing a, a little song it goes like this i receive from you i receive from you i receive from you i receive from you i sing it again i receive from you i receive from you i receive from you i receive from you and whilst we're worshiping i saw a big plane an aircraft on a runway it goes into full throttle and then it lifted up like that and the lord ministered to my spirit to say that some folks with depression is going to lift up like that a heavy body is going to be lifted off your shoulders and you're going to walk out of this place free with joy in your heart so it's about receiving because the hard work was done by jesus and why did he do this he was only demonstrating the love of the father the father has such a great love for you and he doesn't want you to hurt anymore that is why jesus went to Calvary, and it wasn't an easy thing this was a difficult thing it was so painful emotionally mentally physically he was wounded on all sides hallelujah so that you and i can receive so tonight is a receiving time praise the lord are you hearing me and when you are receiving you don't do work oh can i have a copy of that book sir yes i'm going to pass this book around i am giving it away so i'm doing the work and who is receiving Steve, would you please come again? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing this to this. So I am doing the work and he is what? Receiving. He isn't doing no work. It's as simple as that. Praise the Lord. The Lord showed me people with belly ache. You came here with belly ache. If you can check your body now, the pain has left your body. Who is that somebody? You've just been healed. Is the pain there? Come, come forward, come forward. This is how easy it is because it's the matter of what? Receiving. I don't need to call up your condition. If you really know Jesus did the hard work. Oh, come through there. Thank you very much. Who else? If you had pain before you came, you keep checking whether the pain is there or not. What has happened to you? I just don't know. These two days I had this pain here. For how long has this been? Two, two three days. 
two, three days. Two days. Two days. And it's gone now. It's no more there. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Maybe it's hiding somewhere. <laughs> it's gone. Look at the smile in their face. Look at them. Look at them. This is what the Father is all about. So we're going to seal the healing. Would you pray this prayer after me, please? We seal this healing. And we say pain. Don't come back anymore. Amen. Last night, after the meeting, Steve took us to, is it the Perkins? Is up up the road. And there was a waiter, an Indian lady, so nice, so beautiful. And she looked after us so well. So Steve asked her, said to her, I have some good news for you. And she stood there smiling. She, she says, what is it? Steve said, Jesus loves you. By the way, do you have pain in your body? And she said, she said that her heels. And Steve prays his prayer. And we said, check. And she started. Folks, the pain has just left her body. This thing doesn't work only in church. It's so exciting when it works outside. As we were leaving this restaurant, there's this gentleman, a salesman there. I approached him, called Jonathan. I said, I have some good news for you. He goes, what is it? I said, Jesus loves you. And he says, really? Oh, that is good. By the way, do you have pain in your body? He said, yes. I said, where? He said, my ankle. I said, check whether the pain is there. He was checking. Is it still there? I said, would you pray this prayer after me? He's not born again. He hasn't come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. But Jesus died for all. Jesus died for all people. Every sinner on earth, Jesus died for every person. I said, would you say this prayer after me? This belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done. I receive my healing. Now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, check. And this guy took off his shoe. Meanwhile, Steve and others were waiting for me outside. He was doing everything with this ankle. Twisted it, turned it, he said, it's gone. I said, what do you do to Jesus? You want him in your heart? He said, yes. I led him in the sinner's prayer. Right there at work. And I was trying to direct him to this church. I was saying, at world drive. Is it at world drive or at With my African accent, I don't think he heard what I'm saying. So, um, Zach was around. I said, Zach, please come here. Show him where the church is. Received healing, born again, all at the same time. Folks, it's not a hard work. It's all about what Jesus has done. And I will recommend, if tomorrow you make it up, tomorrow morning, because we will impart something to you. Some people think you should have a special anointing. I'm talking of the basic, basic tool Jesus gave to every believer. Either Jesus told lies or he told the truth. He says in Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. We're talking of deliverance. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. In my name, they shall pick up serpents. You're talking of uh, fears, trouble, little troubles. You take off people. In my name, they shall drink deadly poison and come to no harm. They will lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Is it a lie? I am asking you, did Jesus lie? I am asking, did he lie? And if he didn't lie, it means we can do it. 
It's not hard. It's easy. I was speaking in one of my brand churches. And we said this prayer. This belongs to you. And when we finished with that, those who were sick, there was one young man running all around and nobody could stop him. Finally, we stopped him. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, for the past six years, some, there's something wrong in my throat. I cannot swallow. But after we said the prayer, I'm now swallowing. I said, really? Come forward. This is the preacher's water. I hadn't even tasted the water. And I gave this water to him. And right in front of my eyes, he was downing all my water. He was going glow, 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 glow. When he's finished, he gave me a big belt. I say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not knowing this man has been miserable all over these years. And what happens is when he's invited to a home and you, you ask him, what would you drink? He will say no because he cannot handle the pain. And he was due to go in for a surgery in three months and it was a 50-50. He will either live or die. And this was this man's condition. Then all of a sudden, he receives the benefits of Calvary. Benefits of Calvary belongs to you. It is your, it's your legacy. It's your uh, heritage. It's your inheritance from Jesus. When he wrote out his will, your name was on that will. And you got to accept it. When you've accepted it, it becomes yours. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at the lifestyle of Jesus. The lifestyle of Jesus was just miracles all over. Every day. Now, in Matthew chapter 8, he comes down from the mountainside. And a leper comes to him and he says, Sir, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Lepers are normally not touched. Because if you touch a leper, you become unclean for several days. But Jesus, oh hallelujah. He came to demonstrate the love of the Father. Hallelujah. Anytime anybody was healed, it was a demonstration of the Father's love. And Jesus brings out his hand and uh, envelops the man in his arms. And he says, hey, yes, I am willing. Be clean. And the man was cleansed immediately. Just after that, he comes to Capernaum the same day. And here, a centurion comes in a Roman officer who never went to any church. He comes to Jesus and says, Sir, come. My boy, my servant is dying. He's paralyzed. Dying in pain at home. He couldn't handle the chores anymore. And Jesus says, I'll, I'll come. And he says, hey, don't you, sir? For I am also a man on authority. I have men under me. I said to one go, he goes. To another come, he comes. And to another do this. And they do. So, speak your word. And Jesus says, go home. As you believe, this done. He gets home and this boy was polishing his boots, waiting for him. From there on, they move on to Simon Peter's home. And his mother-in-law was down with flu. The boys have come home. They needed some sandwiches. And mama was shaking with fever. And Jesus touches her. Zoom. The fever left her. I'm telling you, the day in Jesus' life. And this was an everyday occurrence. Now, towards evening, so many sick people came over. People filled with demons and everything. And Jesus healed all of them. And other disciples come in. And Peter was doing the same. Peter's shadow, even his shadow was healing people. Some three years ago, I went to Ghana. And God was healing people in this little church. As I approached a young man, 
I said, yes, where is the pain? He said, the pain is gone. I said, how? He said, when you approached me, the pain left me. It was little when I realized that it was my shadow. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? We're talking of something that is easy because of what Jesus has done. That is why you can receive your miracle tonight. Because it belongs to you. For me to share testimonies, we will not leave this building tonight. And I've seen people do it. I've seen other believers receiving he uh, healing and then going out to do. And it's not just that, but all kinds of miracles. Maybe you need a financial miracle here. God, who became poor because of you, you can become rich. He can rescue you out of that debt, valley of debt, and put your feet on the mountain. Somebody lift your right hand up and shout, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Now, there was a story of so many people turning to the Lord because Peter goes to a city called Leda. And whilst he was in this city, there was a cripple called Aeneas who had been crippled for eight years. And Peter looks at this cripple and he says, Hey, Aeneas, the Lord Jesus heals you. We're talking of the resurrected Christ, the risen Christ, who is alive in Peter, praise the Lord. And as soon as he said that, this cripple stood up. And the Bible says, so many people turned to the Lord. When they see miracles, all the doubts disappear. When they see the miracles, they begin to realize that, hey, all that you're saying that Jesus is alive becomes real to, to them. And this is not a big issue because the big boys are very, very few. Like I said last night. The big boys in big time miracles are very, very few. And because you have your own world, a world of your own, you should reach. God has given you this ability to minister healings to people. Some want to wait until their bodies are 100%. But I'm saying to you, when I was still sick, I wasn't able to walk. I was healing people all around. When I say I was healing people, it may sound boastful, but that is not what I'm talking about. In the name of Jesus, because of the Jesus in me, I was lying down, and this Jamaican man, a, a porter in the hospital, was willing me to do the is it MRI. I didn't even know what that meant. And as he was willing me, I said, stop this machine. Come. He came in front of me. I said, do you have pain in your body? And he said, all over, all over, all over. I said, would you say this prayer after me? This belongs to me because of what Jesus has done. I received my healing now in the name of Jesus. He said that. And then he stood there and there was heat sensation all over him. He opened his mouth. It's all gold inside his mouth. He says, oh, it's all gone. Do you know this man, any time he reported to duty, for duty, he would come to my ward and come and say hello to me. When he was going away on leave, he said, oh, I'll be away in Jamaica for two weeks. When I come back, I'll come and see you. This is the nature of what we are talking about. Gradually, God has healed me and he's still healing. He hasn't finished yet. But I'm not going to wait till all is said and done before I step out. No. So I am saying to you tonight, you hearing me telling you this. And the question is, I don't see it around. Because people think it's only special people who should do healing. But I'm talking of a basic too. Would you look at someone and say, this is basic. Oh, say it with some conviction. Go back again. Hmm. 
So are you prepared to receive tonight? It's going to be yours because of what Jesus has done. Jesus let out blood at the Garden of Gethsemane. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 6 talks about his back all broken and his beard. They pulled his beard. He bled. And then they take him to the whipping post. His back was all bruised. He bled. And then they place the crown of thorns on his head. He bled. And then he comes to Calvary. They nailed his palms, his, his hands, and his feet. He bled. And they thrust a, a spear to his side. And he bled to death. It's all for you. And he had assumed your pain. He has assumed your shame. He has assumed me and you, our poverty. He has assumed all that was wrong with us came upon him. He who knew no curse became nature's knight. And even father would not look at him. No wonder Jesus screamed. In the midst of the difficulties of hanging on the cross, he screams, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that God can reconnect with you. That is why tonight, hallelujah, you're going to number yourself among the healed tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more with the sick. Surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Hallelujah. Surely of a certainty the job is already done and ours is to receive. And if you're ready to receive your healing, would you please come forward, walk forward. Whatever, whether it's emotional healing, whether it's a mental situation, you've lost your peace, whatever it is, please come forward. Because this is the time to receive. I receive from you. 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 I want all of 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 you. I receive from 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 you. I want all of you. I want all of you. Oh, I want all of you. I want all of you. Now just open your eyes and say this prayer after me. This belongs to me. The this means the whole of Calvary. The whole of Calvary. We're talking of mental well-being, emotional well-being, and physical well-being. This belongs to me. 
Because of what Jesus has done. I receive my healing. I receive my miracle. Now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And faith is action. So check your body now. If the pain is left you, just shoot your hand up. If the pain is gone, just come forward onto the platform. Don't feel shy. Come forward. Because as we hear the testimonies, faith is going to shoot up all over this place. We pray once more. This belongs to me because of what Jesus has done. I receive my healing now. I receive my miracle now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now check your body. Who else? Check. Faith is action. Oh, Jesus is re releasing to you. Calvary, the release is coming from Calvary every minute, every moment is coming. You keep checking. What has happened to you, Mama? The Lord is so good. I have scoliosis, eight degree curvature of the spine. Not a lot, but enough, but enough to know that Jesus paid for that also. And I felt the Lord touch my back tonight, and he's going to complete the work. Okay. Were you in pain there? Bottom, bottom part of the spine. Is, is the pain there? It's not there now, no. Not there. It's not there. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And how long, for how long have you had this condition? Since I was born. S say that again. Since 54 years. 54 years. This is how God loves us. Hallelujah. Somebody say this prayer after me. We seal this healing. And we say, pain, don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. okay. Now keep checking your body. You keep checking your body. Hear the testimonies. Check your body and then walk forward. What has happened to you, darling? Well, actually, you spoke about mental and emotional healing. And that's what actually I was asking God for, is just emotional healing from pain from a lot of emotional pain that I had, and I just felt the release, and just praise God. Folks, the aircraft lifted off. The trouble is gone. We seal this healing, and we say pain. Emotional pain. Don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Sister Sophie, you want to come and hug her for me? Hi, what has happened to you? Um, I've had a, a lots of problem with an itch. It's like um, feeling like you're being bitten with red ants all over. And it, it starts in one area of my body and then it moves all over. And it, it left. Tonight. For how long have you had this condition? Um, on and off for mm, two or three years. The devil is wicked. He doesn't like you. He hates me and he hates you. Let him go ahead and hate. But Jesus loves you and Jesus loves me. We seal this healing. We say pain. Condition. Don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What have we got here? You said to check, so my hips are fine. I mean, it, the pain was kind of coming and going, so I hope it kind of stays away, you know. It, it's God, it's, it's not here. For how long is this? Um, about three weeks. Three weeks, pain in the hip. It's all gone. You want to demonstrate? You couldn't do this. Oh, look at it. Just take a look at her face. 
and compare it to the face of the clock this is quarter past nine the six o'clock face is gone hallelujah hallelujah okay would you pray the prayer again this belongs to me because of what Jesus has done I receive my healing I receive my miracle when by now in the name of Jesus amen we seal this healing and we say pain don't come back anymore amen thank you now keep checking your body keep checking your body keep checking on because the healing presence of jesus is here the work is already done we are only receiving ours is to receive who else is coming what has happened to you darling i had a little um pain left over from an injury in my left foot and it was gone after the prayer so i thought wow for how long, for how long has this been about a year one and a half year I chipped over a curb and at that time was hurting really bad and then I prayed and God gave me a miracle. The next day I was really praying for a long time. And, <laughs> and, 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 and the question is, this little thing, this little pain can be so offensive and Jesus cares about the little, little things. If you have such a niggly wiggly pain there, in the name of Jesus, I release the life of God into your body now in the name of Jesus. We seal this healing and we say pain. Don't come back anymore. <sighs> come darling. What has happened to you? Um, I work in the computer and I've been working in the computer for like seven years. But just this morning my pinky finger, my pinkies started to hurt this morning and then i just realized now that after the the worship i was going like this and it's not painful anymore during the worship it was painful so after the worship i was just holding it like this trying to massage it and then, and then i was going like this and then it's gone and then i was like god you're funny because this is the only time that my finger had pain for working in computer for seven years but only this morning so and now i realize that god was going to show me something tonight <laughs> he said he loves you we seal this healing and we say pain don't come back anymore who else is coming keep checking your body hi darling what has happened to you um during phys ed class um i was shooting um, a basketball inside the net and I fell on the wrong side of my ankle and it's been hurting for the last couple of days and now it's stopped hurting. So where was the pain? I, I didn't catch what you said. Um, during gym class. Oh, gym class. Yeah, physical. Okay, okay. And you're free now? Yeah. We seal the ceiling and we say pain, don't come back anymore. Amen. If your pain is still there, we're going to take the prayer a little further. What I've realized is this. What I've realized is this. When there is a generational sin, ancestral sin, and even maybe our own personal sins, it gives the enemy the legal right to interfere with the receipt of our healing. But praise God. God tells us in his word in first john 1 9 that if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so the healing can come home the miracle can come home so if you like to lift your hands up and pray this prayer after me i stand on behalf of my family i confess the sins of our ancestors the sins of our generation and my own personal sins and i ask you jesus 
for forgiveness. For the Bible says, if we confess our sins, you faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Devil, you have nothing against my ancestors. You have nothing against my generation. And you have nothing against me. Back off, you sucker. In the name of Jesus. This belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done, I receive my healing. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now check your body. And prayer team, could you go around and start praying with people, please? Members of the prayer team. Mm -hmm. Check, check your body. Do what you were not able to do before. That, that which brings the pain. If you are still depressed, just find out. Check, check, look around. Somebody who is smiling. Start smiling now. If it's gone, just walk, make your way forward. As we hear the testimonies, things are going to happen. What has happened to you, sir? I dropped the machine on my leg before. My leg went that way, and I've been asking God for healing. I've been, like, Christian 25 years in that, right? And I felt something. It, it was hurting right here. And then about 15 minutes ago, and then, and then the pain left. And it feels stronger, but not totally healed. Praise God. Shall we give Jesus a clap offering? This condition happened 25 years ago and he's saying the pain has left and we release strength, total strength into your body. Receive that now in the name of Jesus. We seal this healing. We say pain. Don't come back anymore in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. How about you, sister? What has happened to you? Mm, psychologically, mentally, and even physically when I came in. But um, during the worship, that was one of the planes that went off. Okay. So, I'm, I'm here. We seal what you, whatever you've received. And we say the enemy cannot take anything away from you. God bless you and have a wonderful time every day of your life. Amen. Who else? Mm -hmm. Keep checking, keep checking. I think I was getting attacked by the demons, the tormented spirits, okay. and, uh, and I had lack of faith, and I feel a little bit better now. I'm strengthened a little bit. I feel a little bit of pressure off me. So what makes you feel you're, you're okay now? Uh, I'm, I, I listened to what you said, and I believe it, and, okay. I, and I received it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You know, faith is just accepting what the word of God says. Just accepting what the word of God says. And so be it. We confirm whatever you believe because the word of God says so. Go in peace. And I dip you in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So they're coming to pray with you. Yeah. You keep checking. What has happened to you, sir? Um, before I tell you what happened right now, I want to tell you what happened yesterday as well when we were here. Okay. Uh, he got prayed over first with, from Mr. Friday and he told us to go and check, you know, I have the machine with me all the time. Okay. Um, by the way, he's Joshua and he has type A diabetes, uh, which he had almost two years now. It's going to be two years in May. Uh, so we went and checked and his reading was very high. It was almost 20, which he doesn't have at that time at 9 o'clock. And so uh, we came back and uh, Miss Sophia, she prayed again. 
for him. And so we just uh, thought because when you have 20, it doesn't come down so soon. It takes almost like six, seven hours to come down. So we went home. My husband had duty early morning and we left from this place. And um, usually when his blood sugar goes very low, it goes till 2.6 and he needs to, you know, have juice or he says, Mama, I'm hungry and he's nervous and stuff like that. But in the car, he kept on saying, I'm not hungry, Mama, I'm not hungry. And when we went home and I checked him, it was low. And low LO never comes in the machine. It's very low. That means it's lower than 0 0.6, and which is dangerous. You have to get call the doctors or physicians if it is that low. So straight away I ran and got the juice for him, you know, and he had juice and we checked him again and it was coming up. It was 1.5, something like this, all in the machine still. And then uh, we were all thrilled that he is healed and we were all dancing and rejoicing in the Lord and he was shouting, I'm healed of the Lord and I'm healed and I'm going to have cookies, candies, cakes, chocolate. This is his favorite thing. He keeps on saying every day I'm healed and I'm going to eat everything, you know. And then in the night, again, it shot up when we before when he went to sleep again around 12 30 shot up again to 27 so we we were wondering what's happening it's never happened before this is the first time that it's shooting up and it's shooting down then 3 30 again i checked him and it was 0 0.9 so it was really shooting up shooting down and we didn't know what's going on and so in the morning it was again the same the, the way it used to happen now right now i checked him around eight something it was really high it was 23 and then when we prayed the first time it came down to 18 and just standing there within 10 minutes it was not even 10 minutes when we broke the generation of sins and curses it came down to 15. So what is a normal thing? So normal for a child should be between four and six. Okay. So, but to come down, it doesn't come down. The three units doesn't come down so fast. It takes almost an hour and a half for one unit to come down from 18 to 17. Okay. But we seal this healing and we say diabetes, clear off and don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sister Wara. Okay, what has happened to you, sir? Um, a long time ago, I was lifting a piece of steel at work, and I fe felt a burn on my shoulder, the tendon that goes in the little okay. groove there, and that area has been acting up, and it's it's it, it, got, it was healed, I believe, over here. It, it's the pain went away, and I also had something with my back, lower back like a stiffness and, and that kind of stuff. It's all, it's all gone? Well, it's gone now. It's gone now. I don't feel, I don't feel it right now. Oh, Ben, ben Radova, let's see. Oh, thank you, no Jesus. Pain. No, no pain. pain, no pain. No, no pain. No pain. Right. No pain right now. Oh, somebody stand behind this, this guy. And what about your shoulder? It's not hurting, it's not burning. We seal this healing. We save pain. Don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. What has happened to you, darling? Yes, it's my, my back, my lower back. I've been seeing a chiropractor for 25 years, but it's gotten worse in the last 12 years. And uh, n now uh, I had prayer, and uh, I can bend over, and it feels good, except the muscles are still pretty tight because I've been holding it in the right spot, right? But you're not in pain? No, I'm not in pain. Not in pain. Not in pain. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Shall we clap for Jesus? This is God's doing. We seal this healing. And we say pain, don't come back anymore. Amen. So the prayer team is going around. Shall we pray? This belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. My personal healing. My personal touch from jesus tonight for tonight is my night a night for my personal miracle hallelujah you keep checking as we pray you keep checking you keep checking hallelujah hallelujah 
Oh, I want to see you in droves. Come up. Because the power and the presence of God is here. And wherever the power and the presence of God is, oh, miracles happen. Please come forward. Tell us what has happened. You listen carefully to the testimonies. And I can see you come up too. What has happened to you, darling? Um, I believe I had the uh, finishing touch of my physical, emotional, and psychological and spiritual healing. You feel good? Yes, I feel like he did the finishing touch because I said, go to TACF tonight and have your um, final healing. Because I had, had it before, but because of some disappointments and... Like that. He's taking the pain out of your heart. The pain is leaving you. The pain within your emotions are giving way now. And peace is coming in. Receive all that in the name of Jesus. It's all because of what is done. Receive all of it. Thank you, Jesus. What has happened to you, darling? Keep checking. Keep checking. What has happened? Um, I've had pain in my back for off and on for over 10 years. And uh, a couple weeks ago, a few of us were praying, and a man pointed to me and said, touch your toes. And I said, I can't touch my toes. I've never been able to touch my toes. And we were just praying down there, and, and now the pain is, is much, much better. It's not 100% gone, but I can touch my toes. Oh, touch your toes, <laughs> sister. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Check the pain again. It's gone. Huh? It just went away. It's all gone 100% now. Hallelujah. Shall we see the healing? We seal this healing. And we say pain. Don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, let's give Jesus a shout. Somebody shout. Make some noise. Make some noise. What has happened to you? You keep checking. You keep checking. I went to somebody's home. And as soon as I got there, I asked, Is there anybody sick in this house? I haven't been to that house before. And the guy says, Yes. I say, Who? He says, My son. Well, we did whatever we were going to do. As I was leaving, I said, by the way, where is your son? I was suspecting some seven-year-old kid. And here was the son, a university undergrad, standing on the staircase. And I said, sir, what's wrong with you? He said, back pain. I said, what's your name? He said, my name is David. So I told the father and a friend I was walking with, when I say one, two, three, we will shout, Jesus loves you, David. And I'm going to say one, two, three. And you're going to shout, Jesus loves me now. Are you ready? One and two, three. Jesus loves me now. Receive your healing. What has happened to you, darling? I've suffered with a back problem for 15 years, and it's off and on, but today it was really bad. It, I was very concerned that it was going to go out, like it'll actually go out, and then I won't be able to walk for three weeks. And tonight, since I came, my back's, I'm, I'm still, my muscles are tight, but my back is totally aligned. The, mus, the bones are all back in alignment. Like, normally I'm hunched over. So, so you want to touch your toes? Can you? Yes. Go on. I, I can normally, though. Okay. No pain. No pain. No pain. Thank you, Jesus. We seal this healing. And we say pain. Don't come back anymore. Thank you, Jesus. You keep checking. Yes, sir. It's coming to your turn. You're going to be the next. You'll be coming up because the healing presence of the Lord is here. What's happened to you, sir? Three inches deep, and it's a lot better now than it was before. It's just getting better. It's getting better. You want to check again? Yes. Getting better still? So listen to this. In terms of percentages, how much healing have you received? About 60%. Folks, 60 minus 100 is 40. 
So, what's your name, sir? Jerry. Jerry. Would you stretch your hands over to Jerry? This belongs to you, Jerry. Because of what Jesus has done, receive the remainder of your healing. When? Now. In whose name? Jesus. Jerry, check whether it's. A little bit. Let's say you got 90% or something. Yeah. He says 90. So we've left with 10. So let's join our faith together. Let's stretch our hands over. This belongs to you, Jerry. Because of what Jesus has done. I receive all my healing. Now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Jerry, check it. You got a little left. Check what are this? Right in there. There's pain. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of infirmity, I banish you from his body and I release the life of God. The life of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Check it, Jerry. What? again what has happened it's gone it's gone oh let's make some joyful noise unto the lord oh hey. thank you jesus we seal this healing and we say pain don't come back anymore in the name of jesus this belongs to me because of what jesus has done I receive, I receive, I, 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 call your name, I, Sam Labi, I, call your name, I, receive my miracle, my miracle, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and now check it, check it, check it, what has happened to you, darling? I feel the fire of God. Oh, I've been believing God for two and a half years for cancer to be gone. Whoa, and I believe that he's begun even tonight, and he's going to complete it tonight, and they won't find anything. I've been putting off surgery. They've booked me for the end of March, but I believe they won't find nothing, and my Jewish doctor will be saved. Whoa. Your faith has made you whole. Somebody say, your faith has made you whole. In the name of Jesus, thank you. We release the life of God into your body. Right from the crown of your head, all through to the soles of your feet. There's a lady in my church who had cancer. She loves Jesus. And she's had several surgeries. And one time she came home and the stitches burst open. And she was sitting there and all her intestines, everything came out like that. And the husband was there. He didn't know what to do. She was taken back to a hospital. They sewed her, sewed her up in and out of hospital. But any time she could make it, she comes to church. And we pray this prayer. And two Fridays ago, she comes to church. And she says, Pastor, I have a testimony. They said they did MRI scan and the results, everything are out. There's not a trace of cancer in her body. So she goes back to the hospital, very hospital she is in, she was in, and asked the charge nurse, can I go around and visit the patients? And she said yes. And she started praying for the patients, telling them her story. And she says, I'm just from the hospital. I have all clear. Hallelujah. If you have cancer, you are here with the cancer situation. In the name of Jesus, I curse the cancer cells. In the name of Jesus, I 
cast all those cells and I set you free. Even the fear that has come over your life. The fear that is hanging over you in the name of Jesus is going to lift. It's lifting like an aircraft, lifting off the ground. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, sister, what have we got here? You keep checking your body. Since a year and a half, it started with my back pain. And then uh, because I had fibroids, they, I did operation. They said the back pain was going to get better, but it got worse. And they said I have osteoporosis, high risk fragility fracture. And my hips, and then a few days, it came on my neck. And my, my nerves and my uh, muscles are very tight. Okay. So now I felt a little better on my neck. So I just want to get the whole uh, healing on my body, my back and my You've not been healed yet. I felt better on my neck. On my neck, I felt better. The, the Your side, neck the is side, better. Yes, yeah, a little better. But this is still the same. So you're in pain, you're in pain there? Check again whether the pain is there. Check again. Is there? Ah, would you check again, please? You spirit of infirmity will curse you now. And I command in the name of Jesus, leave a body. It's all because of what Jesus has done. Receive your miracle. Receive your, open your eyes and receive. Receive your miracle. Because of what Jesus has done. Amen. Check. Check whether the pain is there. It's still there. And what about your neck? It's better? What's your name? Sahai. Sahai. This belongs to you, Sahai? Because of what Jesus has done? Receive your miracle. Now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Chahai, check it. Has the prayer team not got to you yet? Don't lose hope. You keep standing. Tonight is your night. You, you just walk around here. Just walk around here. You keep walking. You will see the mirror. What has happened here? You keep checking. What has happened to you, darling? Well, I was heavy to come to the church, and I was in a pain, and uh, I always have a kind of testimony at home if i feel pain and something bothering me i just come to church and within half an hour being in that service and that worship everything is gone and tonight i have a kind of heaviness and my friend invite me and say just come come and i said okay i will come okay <laughs> then i have a kind of pain on my stomach that I usually have for a long time. But this moment, I feel the pain as if something is moving from my abdominal. So the pain is still in your tummy? Yes, but I feel something is moving and I don't have any pain anymore. The pain has left your tummy? Yes. And something is moving? Yes, something was moving. And we don't know what is moving? I don't know. But there's no pain. Whatever is moving, stop moving. In the name of Jesus. Is it still moving? No. It stopped moving. <laughs> we seal this healing. And we say pain. Condition. Don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <sighs> yes. How is it? It's still there. You keep walking. Are you tired of walking? You keep walking. Now keep checking. 
Hallelujah. 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 I receive from you. 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 I want all of 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 you. I receive from you. I receive. I receive from you. I receive from you. It has happened. Yeah. What? I receive from you. I receive from you. I receive from you. We have a miracle here. I receive from you. What has happened to you? Um, since about two weeks, I, I suddenly got a numb ear. And I could hear better on this ear than on this one. And on this one, I couldn't hear completely. It was completely locked up, and sometimes it came back, but it's loose. But um, I, can, I can hear my snapping, and I can hear. I can hear. You can hear now. I can hear now. And, yes. We oh. seal this healing. And also, I, I, I could have had an accident, a severe accident last Friday. And, and it was slippery, icy. And I had to suddenly break. And I had to go this way. And I put all the foot on my brake. And, and this car was trembling because of the brakes. And um, I think this is where I got my... Her neck, too. Last week, she had an accident because of the icy road. And God has healed the neck problem, too. She could hear. Isn't God wonderful? We seal this healing. We say pain, don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus, condition, don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. What are we here? What has happened to you, darling? I have usually a very sore lower back, osteoporosis and arthritis. And tonight it was bugging me and my feet, but my back is now starting to feel better. Okay. My feet have to come too, but my back is... Your feet are still hurting. What's your name, darling? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. This belongs to you, Elizabeth. Will you please join me? This belongs to you, Elizabeth. Because of what Jesus has done. Receive all your healing. All of it. Now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Check, Elizabeth. Check it. And what about your toes? A little bit. In terms of percentages, how much have you received in your toe area? About 20%. About 20%. We're going to pray once more. This belongs to you, Elizabeth. Because of what Jesus has done. Receive all your healing. Receive all that belongs to you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You want to check your toes? My feet are starting to feel very warm. <laughs> Receive, all of it. Receive all of it. Amen. Thank Receive you. Yes, I do. We seal this healing and we say, pains in the feet and in the lower back don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> How are you doing, darling? It's still hurting. While I stand on your behalf, I confess the sin. Open your eyes. I confess the sins of your ancestors, the sins of your generation, and even your own personal sins. And I ask Jesus for forgiveness. For the Bible says, 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now I say, devil, you have nothing against this lady. Absolutely nothing. Because the blood of Jesus is still warm. And the blood of Jesus has cleansed every, anything you have against them. In the name of Jesus, I say, back off, you sucker. This belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done, I receive my healing. Now, in the name of Jesus, amen. Check it. Do what you were not able to do before. It's, it's still painful. It's still there. Well, the seeds of healing have been sown. Tell me what has happened. Well, when you were praying for the eyes earlier, I just okay. um, stood up because I wear glasses, but I just felt the heat go all over my body. Okay. And then when I came up here, I was just praying for emotional heat, more emotional healing. I felt more heat. <laughs> so I just praise the Lord. He's working. Healing. So you feel good now. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We seal these healings. And we say, hey, conditions, don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What have we got here? Thank you, Jesus. My brother. Yes, uh, uh, about seven years back, uh, I had the problem with, eight years back, with hemorrhoids. And, uh, and people prayed for me, and um, I received the healing, and it was gone. But it keeps trying to come back. And the last couple of days, it's been bothering me. And in, in fact, when I came to church, it was, I was still having pain. Um, so while I was down in the prayer line, uh, Pastor uh, Steve was uh, prayed for me, and when he was praying for me, I felt about 50% of the pain gone. I believe it's, it's going, but still there is some of it left. So I'm just praying that uh, it'll where, be where is it pain? Uh, the hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Yep. In the name of Jesus, we command fibrin and fibrinogen, the agents of clot, to begin to function in your body right now. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We call it done. Tomorrow we'll be here in the morning. Come and tell us what God has done. We seal this healing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Since from year 2003. Yeah. And well, I was working, just my inside was paining me. Okay. And from that time, I, I, uh, I tried to work, but if I work two, three weeks, I come and stay home. I can't work. So tonight, uh, two people pray for me yeah. and then your prayers. Yeah. The pastor touched me just now, and I, I see that something like this was moving at my back, so I start making like this. All of a sudden, I see that it left my body, my here. So you don't have pain anymore. No, no. Folks, she's being healed. Isn't God wonderful? Oh, I want someone to make a joyful noise this time. Yeah. Oh, hey! Thank you, Jesus. We seal this healing. And we say pain. Don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Feel free. Go and work now. Hey, the Canadian dollars will come. Glory, hallelujah. Yes. What has happened here? I've tunnel my both arms, my yeah. shoulder, pain over one year. And it's 50% gone. Uh, she says, she saw the, is it your right shoulder? Both shoulders, but the right. She's received 50% pain. I'm going to ask her to hit me with her right shoulder. In the name of Jesus. Sister, go. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Put your hand down. You give me. Give me. Check. Is the pain still there? Ah. You hit me. 
It's, it's hurting bad. What about this? <laughs> you were touching me. You were not hitting me. <laughs> Let's say I'm a mugger and then you want to hit me. So, how are you going to do it? You don't know. Is the pain there? Not as before. Yes, three quarter gone. Not as before. What's your name, darling? Judy. Judy. This belongs to you, Judy. I need help here. This belongs to you, Judy. Because of what Jesus has done. Receive all your healing. Now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do what you could not do with your hand. It's getting better. It's getting better. The life of God is flowing through your body now. The life of God is flowing through your body. Spirit of infirmity is leaving. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those of you who are still standing, pray this after me. This belongs to me. Because of what Jesus has done, I receive my healing. I receive my healing. I receive my personal healing from my personal Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sister, check it. What are you saying? Say it's, it's gone in Jesus' name. Oh, put your hands together. What am I here? Sorry? I said I'm an ex Muslim. Okay. Allah couldn't do this. Only Jesus can do it. Allah could not do this. Only Jesus can do it. Oh, she's saying something you need to hear. Allah could not heal me. Only Jesus can heal me. She's an ex Muslim and she says, Allah couldn't do this. Jesus is healed there. We seal this healing. We seal this healing. And we say, Pain, don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, what have we got here? Jesus is patient. He's coming to each and every one of you. Don't lose hope. Tonight is your night. For your personal miracle. Hallelujah. What has happened to you, darling? My lower back feels healed. And I want it to go and never to come back again. Hallelujah. We seal this healing. And we say, pain, don't come back anymore. You say after me, I number myself. I number myself. I number myself. Amongst the healed. Amongst the healed, yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. What have we got here? Yes, I'm going to go down. Let me go that way. Where is she? Wait with Marco. Oh, okay. She's almost healed. Okay. Come over. Glory, hallelujah. Okay. What has what has been happening to you tonight? I have a pain in my shoulder. Okay. It was praying and praying, and now it's gone. All together. Oh, glory, hallelujah! It's all over. It's all done. We seal this healing. We say pain. Don't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus. Sister, you want to come? You want to come up here? You want to come up? What's your name? Kathy. We're gonna pray. This belongs to you, Kathy. Because of what Jesus has done, receive all your healing now in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Is it lower back? Check whether the pain is still there. And don't help the preacher. You know, sometimes the preacher tries and you want to help him. You say, oh, I believe by faith he's done. If it's the say it is this Jesus who is doing the healing. Pain. pain. Have you received any? <laughs> have you received any healing at all? It any degree of healing? Went away and then it came back worse. Oh. I had prayer last night and it was gone and then it came back worse through the night. Okay. And then when I was standing there it was completely gone and then it came back worse again. Okay, now I'm going to command it in the name of Jesus. And I say, you spirit of infirmity, in the name of Jesus, go and don't come back again. Don't come back no more in the name of Jesus. And I dip you in the blood of Jesus and I raise the hedge of protection around you. Thank you, Jesus. Check whether, whether it's there. Mm. are you coming tomorrow morning come and tell us what God has done God bless you you feeling better Still there. friends just a reminder 10 a.m. if you'd like to come if you did not register that does not stop you from coming uh, just bring ten dollars with you tomorrow and that'll cover your lunch and you need to plan to be able to be here for 10 o'clock and then after the lunchtime, we're going to put you in, in vehicles with uh, other teams. We're going to send you out to practice. So plan to, to be here until probably like 3 in the afternoon or something like that by the time you get back from the houses. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. If you have friends that are not well, we do need some people to practice with tomorrow morning. <laughs> so we need some people that, you know, we're going to practice in-house and then go out and do it as well. So if you've got some friends that aren't well, uh, they can come tomorrow too. Also, Sunday morning here and Sunday night here, uh, we're going to be ministering healing as well. So bring your friends on Sunday morning, bring your friends Sunday night, and Pastor Sam is going to be ministering as well. Here's what I need you to do. If you would like Holy Spirit prayer, more of the Holy Spirit, head underneath the flags, and our prayer team, we're going to sort of transition to just say more of the Holy Spirit, more of God. So if you've got another 10, 15 minutes to give us, that's what we'd like to do. And if I could get our prayer team, could you put your hand up, prayer team? And each of our prayer team who has their hand up, they need someone to be a catcher for them, someone to stand behind while they're ministering. So if you could find someone who has their hand up, go to that person and say, I can help you for five minutes, ten minutes. And prayer team, as soon as you get someone to help you, you go ahead and start ministering to people. Okay, keep your hand up, prayer team, if you need someone to help you. Great. Great. Holy Spirit, come. Still three more prayer team that I can see that need a helper. And again, if you would like ministry from the, of the Holy Spirit, head underneath the flags. Just stand in one of the green lines over there. Okay, still need one more person to help. Okay, we're going good. One over with Marco. Marco's wearing a white t-shirt. He needs someone to help him. Is there a man or a lady that would help Marco? Great, we got someone for Marco. Holy Spirit, come. Those of you under the, pr under the prayer lines right now, underneath the flags, those of you that are watching on the internet, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to close your eyes right now and just let the Holy Spirit begin to fill you right now. Those of you in your home and in your office, just begin to do that. If you're watching in your home on, on a DVD, just close your eyes. Stand up in your own home. Close your eyes. Those of you that are here underneath the flags, close your eyes. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, would you come? Would you touch us again in the very same way that men and women in the Bible were prayed for many, many times? They kept getting prayer. They were obedient to the, the prayer the command in Ephesians chapter 5 to keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I just speak that for each of you and say, be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. 
Spirit of God, would you come and would you minister to every single person? Every single person, Father, come and fill them right now. Those of you that have been watching on the internet tonight, if you've been healed, could you do something for me? Could you send me an email to my address? My email address is slong at tacf dot org. And if you just want to send me a quick email and say, watching the meeting on Friday night, while the meeting was going on, back pain went, or whatever the things were, uh, we just love hearing from you. And so just send us a quick email. Tell me what whereabouts you were watching, Australia, India, wherever it is, and just you know, give us a, a quick little testimony. And uh, I'll send you an email back. I'll probably be, won't be looking at my emails until Monday morning, but I'll send you an email back then. So Father, come, fill every person. And again, those of you that are standing underneath the flags, ministry does not begin when the prayer person comes. Ministry begins when you begin to receive. Ministry doesn't finish when the prayer person moves on. Ministry finishes when the Holy Spirit sort of says, okay, you're done, you can go. And Spirit of God, we welcome you. Come and touch every person. Fill every person again, again. If you're here tonight, maybe you've never been to a meeting like this where you see people being touched, being healed. I want to give you an invitation. One of the reasons why this is happening, the primary reason is because God loves you. God cares for you. And he likes to get your attention. And one of the things that he wants to do is to have a permanent relationship with you and that's why he sent his son Jesus was to die for your sins because it's your sins that separate you from God and sins just aren't things that we do in the outside things the biggest sins the most damning sins that we have are attitudes thoughts that say I don't need God I don't need help and Jesus came to take away all those things away and if you're here tonight and say, you know what, I need Jesus. This, this Jesus that heals people so easily, I need him in my life. I need him to look after my eternal destiny because that's much more important than your physical body. Where you will spend eternity is much more important than an ache or a pain. But he cares for both. He cares for the aches and pains, but he also cares about your eternity. And if you're here, you're watching on the internet, you've never given your life to Jesus, I'd like you to say this prayer with me. Just say it right where you are. Jesus, I acknowledge my need of you. Would you come into my life? Would you forgive me of my sins? I believe that you died for me and that you rose again to prove that my sins are forgiven. Come into my body come into my spirit, come into every part of who I am. I give you who I am and you become my Lord. You become my manager. Live in me forever. And I'd like you to pray one more prayer. I'd like you to say, to, to welcome the Spirit of God to fill you, to overflowing. That's how Jesus did all the stuff that he did, all the good things, all the miracles, all the healing ministry was because Jesus welcomed, Jesus welcomed the Holy Spirit into his life. Say this prayer with me. I welcome Jesus. Sorry, I welcome the Holy Spirit to be in my life in the very same way that he was with Jesus. I welcome him to fill me right now. And just close your eyes and let him begin to do that for you. Begin to receive from him. And he'll come for you. He will. Holy Spirit, come. Fill each person. Fill each of us. If you're in this building and you prayed that prayer to invite Jesus into your life, could you let one of the prayer team know that you've done that? Because they'd like to pray an even special prayer for you. And if you're watching on the internet and you prayed that prayer and gave your life to Jesus, I need you to send me an email as well. S-L-O-N-G at T-A-C-F dot O-R-G. Let me say it again. S-L-O-N-G at T-A-C-F dot O-R-G. I'd love to hear from you if you prayed that prayer. We have some things that we'd like to send you. We can send them in the mail. We can send them by email as an attachment. But it's our privilege to connect with you and 
just congratulate you for that, that prayer. You made a very good choice. So, Father, just keep coming for each person. We welcome you. Holy Spirit, keep coming. Keep coming. If you're standing underneath the flags and no one has come to pray for you yet, could you put your hand up? If you're standing underneath the flags and no one has prayed for you yet, prayer team, if you'll just sort of look around in your area, see where the people are. Spirit of God, come. 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 Worthy is the Lamb. 